While exploring the ruins east of Bunker Hill, you'll come upon a giant wooden ship lodged in the ruins of a large building. Companions will often comment on the scene. How in the hell did a ship get all the way up there? As you get close, you are approached by a Mr. Handy Robot named Lookout. Scanning. Scanning. Accessing pre-war records. Record found. 108th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Battalion. Ahoy there. Tis Providence a member of the Congressional Army is delivered to us in our hour of need. I was in the Army, but what's the Congressional Army? Standing order, sir. Proclamation 3. All members of the U.S. Army are hereby members of the Congressional Army. The Captain requests your presence on the bridge. At the double quick, sir. This lookout has different dialogue depending on whether or not you chose to use the male or female sole survivor. If you choose male, the lookout mentions your military record. If you choose female, the lookout mentions your career as a lawyer. One of the scientists in advanced systems tried to figure out how this boat could have ended up here. Eventually, he just gave up. Scanning. Scanning. Accessing pre-war records. Record found. Driver's license. S nine one three two eight eight six two. Lawyer, ahoy there, citizen. You are hereby conscripted into the Congressional Army. You're doing what? You don't have the authority to do that. We are in desperate times, madam. Proclamation twenty two allows all crew members to conscript citizens for the war effort. There's no way I'm joining your army. Under the terms of Proclamation 22, your consent is not required. We are in a state of emergency. So now I'm in the army. All right. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated, madam. This wrecked building was formerly called the Weatherby Savings and Loan. This was a bank. Inside, we find cash registers filled with pre-war money, and we have to wind our way through the ruin to reach the top floor. Once at the top, we can admire the large jets that seem to be attached to this ancient ship. These almost look like the rockets that we find in the Ark Jet Systems building during the quest that we did when we met Paladin Dance. To enter the ship, we open the bottom hatch. And as we walk, the captain of this vessel addresses his crew. This is the captain speaking. We're taking on an allied soldier. Clear the berth, disable defenses, make way. Midshipmen, stand down. Stand down, I say. This soldier is a guest on our vessel. Please afford him all appropriate courtesies. At length, we are approached by a police protectron named First Mate. Unidentified intruder. Intruder. Mr. First Mate, this is the captain. This soldier is no intruder. Requesting permission to use lethal force. Wait, what, what, you, what, you're gonna kill me? We're the only ones that'll be doing the killing around here. Affirmative. This must be a misunderstanding. You invited me aboard. Why we accepted that invitation is entirely another matter. No records found. Try that, and you'll be nothing but scrap metal, pal. I got no problem shooting robots. Threat detected. Awaiting permission to terminate target. Stand down! That's an order! And for God's sake, use the accent! I, Captain, standing down. Having survived our encounter with the first mate, we can continue to the top floor to find a staircase that leads to the deck. Here we find the captain of this vessel, a sentry bot wearing a stellar hat named Ironsides. I'll have none of your lip, Mr. Navigator. Have the crow's nest scan two points off the port bow. Jump to it. Aye, captain. Our soldier has arrived. I trust the first mate didn't give you too hard a time. Been too long since we've seen the Congressional Army. Are, are you broken? Why the hell are you talking like that? The quaint vulgarity of the common soldier. It warms the circuits. First mate, Congressional Army? Wh why are you talking like that? This is the pride of our Navy, the USS Constitution. As her commander, it is my privilege to enforce a certain measure of decorum amongst my crew. Thanks for calling them off me. The scan shows you have the proper number of appendages still, so all is well. I am Captain Ironsides, commander of the USS Constitution. Why are you even here, on this ship? 
It's ancient. This vessel has more than once been the seat of our great nation's naval power. Is it not fitting she donned this mantle again? You didn't explain why you're talking like that. Look around you. In these times of great unrest, is it not prudent to adopt the manner of a more civilized time? If that answer is not to your satisfaction, I'm afraid you must make your peace with it. Are you crazy? Do you even know what year it is? Do not mistake my genteel manner for derangement, sir. I am fully aware that it is the year of our Lord, 2287. Your lookout told me to come up here. Why? I confess, we need your assistance. You visit this fine vessel in trying times. Be calm these long years on her airy perch. Damn you, Weatherby Savings and Loan! I spit at you. How did it even get up here? Now this I have to hear. A harrowing tale of that there can be no doubt. Or I should say, I assume it is. I came upon her as she is, atop the Sargasso Sea of rubble and misfortune. You should just abandon the ship. I agree. I take what I can, and then burn the rest. It is not in my character, sir, to retreat simply because the odds are great. I will persevere. That's quite a predicament. Well, at least you've given us something to laugh at for a while. A sad state of affairs for such a historic ship. Frankly, I can't believe this hunk of wood is still in one piece. On that, we are in agreement. What vexes me most is my inability to assist in the war effort. My gun decks have not but Morats and ne'er-do-wells as targets. Enough pleasantries. The Constitution has systems that need repairs to carry out its mission. What war effort? Against Communist China, of course. But if any Redcoats or Canadians sail nearby, I will give them a good thrashing, to be sure. To avenge the burning of our nation's capital would be a sweet victory indeed. Fix the ship yourself. I don't take orders from you. I insist you do, sir. It's a court-martialing offense to disobey the orders of a superior officer. If I help you, I expect part of the payment up front. What a singular request! Were you in the Navy, I would remind you of your oath. But, as a soldier... I will authorize a performance bonus payable immediately. Consult with the ship's person. Consult with the bosun and Mr. Navigator. Attention. They will relay your instructions. Dismissed. As soon as we are dismissed, the ship gets attacked. Soldier, man the cannons. Kill them only as a last resort. A few warning shots usually suffice to scare that rabble off. Scavengers emerge from the ruins and start to attack the robots aboard the ship. And you. To mount a defense, you can activate a nearby circuit, which controls the cannons arrayed on the deck. This fires the cannons, annihilating most of the scavengers. You can then pick off the rest with a ranged weapon, or hop on down to deal with them personally. When done, we need to find the purser that Ironsides talked about to get our upfront fee. This is the terminal on deck. And it's here we learn a little bit of history about this ship. The USS Constitution was a museum ship in Boston, just like it is in the real world today. That's right, the USS Constitution is a ship from our own history. It was designed by a man named Joshua Humphreys, who used an unusual design at the time that gave the ship a long keel and narrow beam. He mounted it with very heavy guns and extremely thick planking. It gave the ship's hull greater strength than most frigates of the time, which came in handy as this ship was used in many fights, including the Quasi War of 1798, the First Barbary War against the Pirates, the War of 1812, and it even had a role in the Civil War. Its most famous encounter was against the French vessel the HMS Guerriere. The Guerriere opened fire upon the USS Constitution, but the cannonballs just bounced off. This was due to the exceptionally thick hull of Joshua Humphrey's design. The Constitution defeated the Guerriere and became famous. Everyone nicknamed the ship Old Ironsides, since the cannonballs just bounced off. This, of course, is why the sentry bot we find is named Ironsides. Back to Fallout lore, we learn from this terminal that Ironsides was a tourist bot. His accent and way of speaking was likely programmed to be an amusing attraction. However, after the Great War of 2077, Ironsides found ways to overwrite his programming, to release himself, as he says, from the shackles of his tourist robot programming. Eventually, he developed a mission of becoming captain of this vessel, but we don't really know how it became equipped with the rocket boosters. 
or how it got lodged in this building. Ironsides tells us that the ship was like this when he got here, which doesn't make a lot of sense if he's been here the whole time. As a tourist robot, maybe he's talking about his new personality, his new role in life as captain of this vessel. Maybe that is when he counts his existence. Or maybe the Bostonians of the time in this Fallout universe equipped the vessel with these giant rocket boosters so that it could put on amusing shows, possibly during the 4th of July. At any rate, we can collect our fee from this terminal and then head below deck to talk to the bosun. Your very presence does this humble unit a great honor. My programming would find it amiss if I did not also interject. Long live the captain. You certainly have pep. Much obliged for the compliment. Is every robot on this tub broken? I confess. I may be missing a few parts that are considered standard on my model. But broken? I should say not. Do you often just interject, as you put it? Indeed I do. I exclaim from exuberance, and not because I've been reprogrammed five times to wholeheartedly embrace these marvelous turns of phrase and, and acronyms. My metal heart burns with a fierce love and affection for our captain. Huzzah! Why were you reprogrammed? Was the captain involved? I will confide this only as a cautionary tale. The captain requires all crew to speak in the proper idiom. We are the inheritors of a sacred tradition. There was a time I thought he was, well, balmy. With my new programming, I see his incalculable wisdom. Our last marine expedition valiantly returned with much needed supplies, including replacement power cables, sir. Alas, with my severe lack of appendages, I find myself unequal to the task of repairing the cables myself. Can't someone else repair it? The rest of this crew is programmed for more martial pursuits. And they are, dare I say, useless in this endeavor. Oh, were I hale and hearty. But fate is a cruel mistress. How'd you lose your arms? They were stolen from me in their prime. With a full two centuries left on their warranty. The scavenger scum blasted them off me as I valiantly defended our ship systems. But the ship surgeon still with us. The ship had a surgeon? What happened to him? Sadly, he is no longer with us. Another casualty in our thrice classic war with the scavengers. He's passing. He's a terrible loss. Look around. The captain's vision brought us here. But it was the surgeon who rebuilt the Constitution. Now it falls to us to carry on his work. I'm not a mechanic, pal. I would despair, but it appears my despair emulator has been forcibly removed. So instead, I will await the cable's repairs with unbridled anticipation. I'll see what I can do about your cables. I'll feel my anxiety emulators lightning by the microsecond. Once you have resolved this matter, I beseech you to return to me to accept my undying gratitude. So he wants us to repair the power cables on this vessel. We find big yellow cable boxes, and if our intelligence is higher than three, we can jury-rig these ourselves. Otherwise, we can find the necessary cables in a big metal box right next to the first yellow cable box. With those in hand, we can go to the three yellow cable boxes on the ship and repair the wiring. We can then head back to the bosun to tell him the good news. Bosun. How uh, course is through the Constitution's veins again! Her systems, long starved, flick out to life! <laughs> A hearty congratulation! Huzzah! However, this has brought to light further failures in our power grid. The power relay, to my shame, I previously complained about is fluctuating wildly. Why are you ashamed of that? Bad for morale, sir. There were dark times. But I made all manner of baseless complaints against the captain. The manner in which this ship is run, and the plausibility of our sacred mission. But now, I see the error of my ways. And with your help, perhaps I can atone. Can't you fix anything yourself? Your criticism squarely hits the mark, sir. I fear the butcher's bill is many a fine, Mr. Handy, on its list. I entreat you to aid us once more. Don't worry, I'll get you up and running. Only for you, sir. Power relay coils are a common enough part. Might I recommend checking the local shopkeeps? Surely, they would be of some assistance. Fair winds and following seas. 
On the wall, we find a fuse box, but now in, in this ship, it's called a power relay box. We need to find power relay coils, and these are actually easy to find. They drop off of machine gun turrets all the time. If we don't have any handy, we can use an intelligence of five or greater to repair them. Otherwise, we need to go and find some. Once repaired, we can go back to the bosun. Power flows far and steady. I would applaud you, but alas, I cannot due to my lack of clapping instruments. But huzzah, sir, huzzah! Please tell me we're done. Indeed we are. So no more problems with the power? Area one. It flows like a veritable torrent through our cables. If I may say so, the surgeon would be proud. Well, you're very welcome, Bosun. You are too kind. I require no further assistance. But our Mr. Navigator is also beset by troubles. Scuttle buddies, our guidance system is on our last legs. If you've not already, speak to him. Fare thee well. Next up, it's the Navigator. We find him topside. From Mr. Navigator, we can learn more about these scavenger attacks. Ahoy, soldier. Scavenger threat eliminated. Damage assessment will commence after this unit has completed scheduled duties. Why did the scavengers attack? Scavengers have attacked ship 17 times. Destroyed 13% of ship's systems. Stole... 5% of ship's store. Logic error. Captain's orders authorize scavenger termination only if necessary to preserve the ship. If they've attacked you 17 times, why don't you fight back? This unit suggests Captain's core processes in need of extensive maintenance. I didn't know helping you guys would turn me into a target. Warning redundant. Entire Commonwealth region is classified as extremely dangerous. You robots do a good job of defending your ship. Proclamation 1. Defend the Constitution by any means necessary. Guidance system offline. Multiple errors diagnosed. First error. Guidance chip stolen. This unit requires its return. Who stole your guidance chip? Guidance chip is one entry on the list of stolen items. Reclaim chip at Scavenger's forward recon station. Captain has approved a bounty for its return. Lethal force is prohibited unless absolutely necessary. Aft dinghy unlocked and available for your use, sir. So the scavengers stole the ship's guidance chip, and we need to find a way to get it back. Well, there's a dinghy in the very back of the ship, and the robots have turned it into a little elevator. We can take the dinghy elevator down to the ground and then head west to talk with the scavengers. Now, I wanted to talk with these guys during the day, so I found a bench and waited. At daybreak, even though it was raining, I managed to find the scavengers in their headquarters. They are led by a scavenger named Mandy Stiles. Don't shoot! Those assholes didn't attack the ship on our orders. They weren't trying to frag you anyhow. They just wanted to kill the frickin' robots. So some of your guys almost got me killed. We told those crazy assholes not to attack. It's not our fault, all right? So they were scavengers, but not with you. Well, they were kind of with us. I mean, we're not really used to working together. It's not like anyone is in charge. But we do have an agreement. Everyone works together, gets an equal share. When you waltzed aboard the ship, those assholes just kind of lost it. They broke our agreement and paid for it. How did you get aboard anyway? We thought you were going to get cratered for sure. Does it really matter how I got aboard? Fine, don't tell me. How I got aboard is my business, not yours. All right, forgive me for asking. He knew I was an army veteran, so he let me on the ship. Army? Isn't that some old world mumbo jumbo? Whatever. So, you got to see the inside, huh? All that salvage. The real mother load. Just waiting to be stripped and sold. Is all the junk inside really that valuable? Well, yeah, we could keep Diamond City in parts for months with all them gizmos. We'd never have to scrounge in the gutter again. So it all boils down to greed. Like it always does. Hey, if we sell those gizmos, uh, I don't know, they could help orphans and stuff. Us humans could use it a lot more than those robots. So you talked with a tin can. What do you have to say? 
What do you think he said? No freaking clue. The only talking we ever did to that Russ Bucket was him yelling at us about keel hauling crap like that while his robots tried to murder us. We talked about a lot of things. Let me guess he wants his computer chip back, right? Well, too bad. It's our salvage now. You know what he needs it for? His rockets. The huge goddamn rockets on the side of his boat. He's nuts. Rockets? Why is he building rockets? Who knows? Maybe a bomb. Maybe he'll launch himself into space. Who cares? It's valuable as hell. That's what matters. He didn't tell me that. Of course he didn't, because he's off his damned rocker. I'm sure there's a good reason he needs them. You seriously want to help that idiot bolts for brains? So? He wants to build a rocket. You can't seriously be all right with that? Screw that robot and come work with us. There's dozens more of us nearby. It's only a matter of time before we come out on top. I'm not splitting my share with him. You holding out on us, Davies? You got some magical way in there? This guy's got a free ticket aboard, so shut up. Help us destroy that freaking tin can once and for all. What's in it for me? Never thought I'd say this, but those robots are so daft. I'd help this lot for free. What do you think? The tin can's gonna pay you? Maybe in some freaking doubloons? Stick with us and you'll be rolling in caps. So you in or out? Now, we can respond to this entreaty a number of ways. We can simply say no. No deal. I'm with Ironsides. You're siding with that daft robot? Then screw you, asshole. You're lucky we don't gun you down. If we choose this option, we still have to get the guidance chip, which is found inside a filing cabinet inside the building. There's a guard posted at the door and he's watching us, but after a while, he will walk away. If we wait till we're hidden, we can loot it, but this still alerts the scavengers. They all open fire on you, forcing you to kill them. You mess with one of us, you mess with Another option is to say that we need some time to think about this. I need to think about this. You kidding? What's there to think about? That robot is daft as a brush. Don't take too long or we'll crack the Constitution open ourselves. Then you'll get nothing. This puts them off their guard. We can go to that back room, wait until we're no longer detected, and steal the guidance chip. Then we can unchain and sneak out the back door, but we have to be careful because we find fragmentation mines on the ground. We have to disarm these before we leave. The third way to avoid bloodshed is to simply agree to the plan. We could be honest, we really want to side with them, or we could be lying. We don't have to make that choice yet. Yeah, I'm in. What's the plan? Thank God. I almost thought you were buying into the whole pirate thing. That's the right call. I've been working this claim for months. Like hell, I'm letting this greenhorn take any of my caps. We got no choice. We need him, Davies. We need to sabotage those rockets. If they blow up, that'll put those frigging cannons offline. So if you find any rocket parts for the tin can, give them to me first. Then Davies will make some special improvements. I repaired the ship's power systems. Is that going to be a problem? Power systems? That won't do nothing. Closest we ever got to screwing him over is grabbing their guidance chip. And if we tinker with that, then who knows where the ship will land if it takes off. We need to sabotage the rocket itself. They're super complicated, easy to break. He's got to be missing some parts. You better not double-cross me. Trust is a two-way street. The guidance chip is in one of the filing cabinets inside. You better not renege on our deal. If we choose this option, they tell us that we can retrieve the guidance chip freely. Now everything inside this house 
is no longer set to owned. We can loot the Guidance chip and everything else if we want, so we should take advantage of that opportunity now. With the Guidance chip in hand, we can go back to the USS Constitution and find the yellow Guidance dish on the deck. Nearby, there's a little controller where we can place the chip, and then we can talk to the navigator. Ahoy, soldier. Chip recovered. Dispensing bounty. Diagnostics report. One error remaining. Guidance radar's transmitter is non-functional. Requires replacement. What's wrong with the transmitter? Diagnostic inconclusive. No functioning Mr. Handy's available for detailed analysis. And this is the part where I bail you out again. Soldier's statement is factually valid. Acquire Poseidon radar transmitter at specified map coordinates. Further bounty will be dispensed upon completion, sir. Our next mission is to get a Poseidon radar transmitter. If our intelligence is greater than nine, we can repair it without having to go hunting. Otherwise, we are sent to one of two Poseidon Energy locations. The first is the Poseidon Energy Turbine number 18F, in the big end of dungeon chest inside the turbine. Or, as I was, we may be sent to the Poseidon Energy Reservoir. This place is infested with ghouls and it may take you some time, but like at the turbine, we find the radar transmitter in an end of dungeon chest at the bottom of the reservoir. Back at the USS Constitution, we can then go to the Guidance dish and install the radar transmitter. Once done, we can again talk to Mr. Navigator. Ahoy, soldier. Guidance system fully functioning. Bounty dispensed. It is required you commence dialogue with the captain, sir. Captain Ironsides. You've been of service to our noble vessel. I am pleased you recovered the Guidance chip without bloodshed. Though the scavengers have caused us grievous injury, our goals must be nobler than base revenge. Why did you want me to spare the scavengers? I confess they are a blight upon my existence. Those scallywags killed many of my marines. We're down to a skeleton crew due to that filth. But they are citizens of the Commonwealth. Citizens we're pledged to protect against foreign incursion. Which is not without its irony. The scavengers tried to convince me to blow up your rocket. They seek to impugn the honor of the military. Truly, there is no depth they will not sink to. I find I must reward your considerable efforts with the final labor. We stand but a hair's breadth away from embarking on our sacred mission. So now can you tell me what's going on? Complete this task and I will gladly relate our mission. Until then, silence, vigilance. The ship requires turbo pump bearings from a nearby factory. It will undoubtedly be a dangerous mission, but I have faith you will succeed. I thought I was finally done with this. We are defined by the caliber of challenges we choose to undertake. So attack adversity with gusto. I'm always happy to help. I would expect nothing less. Now we gotta find some turbo pump bearings. Sadly, no amount of intelligence allows us to bypass this step. The game will randomly pick one of three locations, either the Corvega assembly plant, Fort Hagen, or the General Atomics factory. I got the Corvega assembly plant, so off to Lexington we go. Inside the plant, we deal with the raiders, and then inside one of the raider pods where the boss is, we find the turbo pump bearings in the end of dungeon chest. Now that we have these bearings, we have a choice to make. Do we side with the scavengers and give it to them so that they can sabotage it? Or do we bring it to Ironsides and install it ourselves? I will show you both outcomes, but first, let's help out old Ironsides. Now, Ironsides gave us a key to his personal captain's quarters. Inside, we find a hatch open. This is the turbo pump. With the correct part in hand, we can install the FLL3 turbo pump bearings to complete this portion of the quest. Also, while we're here, we can loot a copy of the U.S. Covert Operations Manual, Urban Camouflage, sitting on a table inside the captain's quarters. It makes you permanently more difficult to detect while sneaking. Once done, we can report our success to Captain Ironsides, and at last he tells us his plans. Trim the power on the starboard bow. Steady as she goes, Mr. Navigator. Luck willing at long last we'll set sail, and our hero of the hour is to thank. You've earned a double share, sir. Well done. Set sail? <laughs> You'll need a hell of a lot more than luck to do that. Doubt is reasonable. On the eve of our voyage, the need for secrecy is long past. Our twin NX-42 rockets will alight and then moor us from this dreaded savings and loan. The Constitution will launch into the heavens 
and after, gently land in the ocean. Then we take our rightful place as defenders of the Atlantic. You're going to what? A thing of brilliance, is it not? You're gonna blow the whole damn ship up. Oh, ye of little faith, there is a scant 14% chance of that. That's ambitious. As they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Mr. Navigator, put her through her paces. We need to... Those motherless curs, prepare to broadside. Defend the Constitution until our last breath. The scavengers attack. Like the last time, we must fight them either ranged or jump down to engage in closed quarters combat. These scavengers are more highly armed than the ones we met previously. They even use missile launchers at you. Once they are dealt with, we can go back to Ironsides to see if he really does intend to put this thing in the air. Gods be good, the scavenger assault has been broken. Not one of those scallywags stepped foot on our vessel. All hands, prepare ship for launch. You're still going through with this? Given time, the scavengers will regroup. It may be now or never. Ugh, this is a horrible idea. Only if I fail, sir. I'll be going then. There is one thing. We need power from the auxiliary generator to commence our voyage. I fear I must call upon you one last time. I'm getting tired of doing your errands. There is nothing left to be done. Victory or bitter defeat is all that remains. I've come this far. I recognize that without your considerable efforts, we would not be here. Where's the generator? On the top deck of the Royal Arms Apartments. Scavengers may yet remain, so have a care. Consider it done. I admire your pluck. Here is your amply deserved reward. Godspeed to you, sir. As a reward, we get the Broadsider. This is a unique heavy weapon that takes cannonballs as ammunition. It does a lot of damage, but you only get one shot at a time and it's so slow to reload. You can upgrade it at a weapons workbench, but the upgrades are okay. They're not stellar. In my game, I don't think I would replace my Gatling laser with it, but it sure is a fun weapon to use. Now, one may be concerned with lack of cannonballs as ammunition, but you can always use an iBot pod from the Automatron DLC to go find more stacks of cannonballs. If you do, you'll find stacks of cannonballs in 30 or 40 balls, which does make this a viable weapon for everyday use. But back to the task at hand, we need to turn on the generator at the Royal Arms Apartments. The apartments are the destroyed building just across the street from where we find the scavengers headquarters. Climbing all the way to the top, we find a circuit breaker next to a radio. Ironsides will talk to us through this radio. Mr. Navigator, slowly throttle the engines. Keep idling those engines. Once ready, we can flip it. Hoy, soldier. We're ready for our auxiliary power. How in the hell did a ship get all the way up there? Power nominal? Excellent. Commencing final countdown. How in the Three. hell did a ship get all the way up there? Two. One. Mr. Navigator, light the engines. Dreaded savings and loan, we shall be moored no longer. We are away. Two points to starboard. And with an explosion, the USS Constitution roars to life and sails from atop the Weatherby Savings and Loan across the water. You hear that? Uh, then it smashes into a giant skyscraper, effectively ending the maiden flight of the USS Constitution. We did it! Victory at last! Helm reports we are a quarter fathom closer to the Atlantic. By my calculations, in a mere century, we will take to the ocean. Well done. That ship ends up everywhere except the water. Ocean. Ironically, the building it crashes into is Weatherby Investment Trust. <laughs> they went from one financial institution to another one. This one deeper in downtown Boston. 
Now that he's got a new home, we can head back to talk to Ironsides. To do so, we head to the Weatherby Investment and Trust. There's a Slocum's Joe in the basement of it. We have to go through a big wrecked bus to find an elevator which leads to the top of the building. At the top of the building, we find another elevator that brings us to the rooftop. Here we see rubble has formed a ramp that leads down to the deck of the USS Constitution. What a glorious success. True, the mission is not quite complete, but one cannot deny our progress. You consider this a success? Wholeheartedly, sir. But now you're stuck in a skyscraper. You're no better off than you were. That is where you are wrong. Now we command the high ground. And once the rockets are rebuilt and refueled, I wager at this rate we should land in the ocean in one, perhaps two more launches. My circuits tremble with excitement. I'm sure everyone in the Commonwealth could see your maiden voyage. To be certain. And our rockets gave our enemies much to consider. You really are going to launch the ship again? With the courage and support of my faithful crew, our eventual triumph is assured. There's no way this ship will survive another launch. Oh, ye of little faith. I guess it all worked out. That it did. I'm glad I could help out. You are instrumental, sir. A veritable godsend. In recognition of your courageous role in this, I hereby promote you to the role of Honorary Lieutenant. And being that I, well, cannot actually fit below decks, I hereby give you the captain's quarters as well. Three cheers for our new Lieutenant. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Nothing like an insane robot with irrational hope. <laughs> I just love Ironsides and all these robots. As a reward, he gives you a first lieutenant hat, which is a handsome looking hat. Sadly, it does not accept ballistic weave unless you have a mod installed, but it looks amazing nonetheless. Many meters of course along the Z axis. Still assessing extent of damages. Plotting new course. Bosun, play a part in something so magnificent. I'm programmed to burst with excitement. Huzzah! The ship's structural integrity is well below recommended levels, but peace posh. I'm certain everything will work out. So much work to do. I'll have to factor in extra time for the lack of appendages. Now, you can use the captain quarters as your private player home if you want. There is every crafting workbench you could possibly need inside the ship, and the bed is yours. You do get a well-rested bonus by sleeping in it. The only problem is that all of the items in the captain's quarters are still set to owned. This has got to be an oversight on Bethesda's part, and it effectively makes this player home not really realistic. Because if you place any of your items in these owned containers, suddenly they are now owned by the robots, and they will attack if you take them. If you play on the PC, however, you can get around this by using console commands to set the ownership of these boxes and containers to the player. Then you can take items in and out without incurring the wrath of the robots. Now that's just one way to end this quest. There was another option. Let's go back in time to the point just after we collected the turbo pump bearings from the Kravaga assembly plant. Instead of taking these to the Constitution and installing them, let's instead take them to Mandy Styles. You got any of the tin cans parts? Let's see if we can give them a little surprise. <laughs> I have something right here. Let me see. Hey, what do we have here? Davies. Davies? Yeah, Mandy? What the hell is this? I've never even seen a metal like this. That is some high-tech shit there. Turbo pump bearing. Can't make stuff like that anymore. What is a turbo pump? Rockets need fuel. Loads of it, and fast. The turbo pump feeds the engine. Any little defect with it, and you got big problems. So is this what we're looking for, or not? Yeah, this is it. If a turbo pump craps out, your rocket's got big problems. Hand it over. After we're done with it, Ironsides is going to get one hell of a surprise when he lights them rockets. So if you sabotage the bearing, what's going to happen to the ship? The rocket's going to blow. That'll take the defense systems down. Then we storm the ship before they come back online. So hand it over already. At this point, we have a couple of ways to respond. We can say we'll hold on to it. I think 
I'll hold on to it. What? You getting cold feet? There's no people on that ship. No one's gonna get hurt. So give it here. Now. She does make a good point. No one's gonna get hurt. They are, after all, robots. We can use our leverage to negotiate a better deal. Right now, I have leverage. So I want to renegotiate our deal. You want a what? The Greenhorn wants more caps? Let me shove this gun. Easy, Davies. If we don't take out those cannons, we are nowhere. Here's 500 caps extra. Hand it over. If we turn up our nose at these 500 caps, Mandy does not respond well. Really? 500 caps? That's it? You son of a... Davies, you get your wish. Waste him. They attack forcing you to kill them. Crazy? <laughs> Interestingly, Mandy's last words are always, mother. Another option is to say that we're not ready yet and to leave with the bearings. This is our final chance to change our mind without bloodshed and give the bearings to Ironside. You know what, enough. I'm not getting into it. I'm leaving. Come back once you come to your senses. Or we can be up front with Mandy and say that we've changed our minds. I changed my mind. I'm not going to work with you. You playing us, punk. You playing us? Waste this asshole. In which case they attack, forcing us to defend ourselves. Mother. But if you sympathize with the scavengers, if you feel like they are right, we can go ahead and give the bearings to Mandy. Fine, take it. You had me worried there. Davies, how long will it take to sabotage? Already done. Just a splash of the old hydrochloric. Bearings like these got zero tolerance. Here you go. Once Ironsides has all of his parts, get off the ship. We'll meet up and watch the rockets blow together. Davies covers it in hydrochloric acid, which apparently is all that needed to be done. Not sure how that's going to cause an explosion, but hey, it's fallout physics. I'm not going to worry about it. From here, the quest goes on as normal. We install the booby-trapped bearings and then go up to Captain Ironsides, whereupon he will continue thinking that the ship is ready to fly. He asks us to turn on the generator. We go back down and we meet Mandy inside the apartments. Hey, over here. The rockets are starting. <laughs> Go ahead and give him his power. Once the rockets blow, then we strike. Heading up to the top, we flip the circuit breaker lid and turn on the generators as normal. Power nominal. Excellent. Commencing final countdown. But this time... Busters! As soon as the rockets explode, all of the robots on board the ship open fire. We now have to go topside to clear the vessel of all robots and finally put down Ironsides. Well, I die as I lived in service to this great nation. I found it difficult to loot Ironsides, but you can loot him, but you do not get the Broadsider. You only get the Broadsider if you end the quest in Ironsides favor. Instead, all we find on his body is his personal hat, which looks just like the first lieutenant hat. Once the robots are dealt with, we can go back to Mandy. She now stands in the street with a bunch of other scavengers, ready to loot the ship. Mandy. Constitution is all ours. You guys did good. I'm surprised you survived. You're not making this easy. See, we had a vote, and we decided we're not going to split the hall with you. For what it's worth, I voted against it. You voted to backstab me? We've been fighting Ironsides for months. A lot of people died. They say you just can't stroll in at the last minute and get an even share. This ship should be mine. I did all the work. That attitude makes this a little easier. Surely we can work something out. Sorry, pal. I really am. It gets worse. They also voted to have you dealt with permanently. Can't have you disputing our claim later, so here's the part where you die. You assholes just signed your death warrants. I don't respond well to being double-crossed. Looks like even if we do everything for these scavengers, we still have to kill them. Strangely enough, the scavengers like Davies back at the scavenger HQ, whom we do not find in the street, don't turn hostile. But to complete the quest, we still have to kill them. This brings us to 
an ethical dilemma. Which option is right? Now, clearly, one of these options is the most beneficial to the sole survivor. If you side with Ironsides, you get a unique gun, a unique hat, plenty of caps, and access to a brand new player home. But if you side with Scavengers, you miss out on the unique gun. Siding with Ironsides is the most practical solution. But these are just robots. Mandy raised a good point when she said that she wasn't going to be killing anybody. They just wanted to destroy the robots to scrap the place. Who are we to get in their way? Scavengers are just doing what they do. They scavenge for scrap in the wasteland to make a living for themselves. And can we really fault them for that? Now it's true. The first time we meet them, they do open fire on us, unprovoked. We didn't know they were there. We didn't know they were staking out this claim. And yet when we're on the deck of the ship the first time, they do attack us. Now Mandy did say that those goons were not hers, really. So I'm not sure if we can really hold that against her. And these robots are delusional. Ironsides, even to the point of reprogramming robots, Bots to think the way he does. Remember the bosun tells us that he initially objected to a lot of Ironside's plans. Instead of listening to those arguments, Ironside's reprogrammed the bosun five different times to make him more compatible with his plans. Now, of course, if Bosun were a human being that would be morally reprehensible, he would be violating his free will, but Bosun isn't a human being, he's just a robot. So is what Ironsides did really wrong? Let's also consider the nature of Ironsides. Yes, he is a robot, but he has been evolving for 200 years, kind of like Codsworth. Codsworth is more than just a Mr. Handy robot. He's developed not only a distinct personality, but his own morals and ethics in view of the world. Can we really say that he's not... A person? Maybe Codsworth has evolved personhood over these 200 years. And if Codsworth can do it, maybe Ironsides did it. Maybe by betraying Ironsides, we're not just destroying a robot, but we're destroying a person. Ironsides clearly isn't mad. He knows the exact date and time. But then again, he does still think that we're at war with Red Communist China. So something is clearly off with the robot. That said, he's got a greater personality than any of the scavengers. He values human life more than the scavengers do. He sees it his moral obligation to protect them as US citizens. He likes it if you're able to resolve things without bloodshed. That's an admirable human characteristic. We don't know that at the time we have to make the decision, of course. We don't know they're going to betray us. But Ironsides clearly values human life. He has humanity. Should that not be enough to make him worthy of preservation? You know what, in this situation, I don't think I can make an ethical call. I don't think it's moral to side with Ironsides, and I don't think it's moral to side with the scavengers. I don't think it's ethical to kill the scavengers unless they attack first. If they attack first, as they do when they betray you, then of course one must defend oneself and it's ethical to kill them. But until that point, they're just scavengers, and it would not be ethical to kill them. Here's what I decided. I decided that I'm a scavenger too, and I found a way onto the ship. I, as a scavenger, have just as much right to scavenge what I want off that ship as any of the scavengers on the ground. It doesn't matter how long they were there. It doesn't matter how long they've been, quote, staking their claim. I came upon the ship just like they did. I wanted the scrap and salvage, and as a scavenger, I have just as much right as they. If they attack me for scavenging from this ship, they have become hostile, and it's ethical to defend myself. I can then choose to work with these robots for any reason I want. Maybe I find them funny. Maybe I think the world would be a better place with a bunch of half-crazed robots killing raiders and gunners from atop a ship in the middle of downtown Boston. The scavengers certainly weren't going to be making the world a better place by scrapping all of the salvage. It was Mandy who mockingly talked about saving the orphans. No, they were in it for themselves. They wanted to make a buck, and I wanted to make a buck. Neither of us are ethical or unethical for wanting to make a buck, but Mandy and her goons become unethical when they attack other human beings simply for trying to do what they are doing. Make a living in this wasteland. So I chose to side with Ironsides for the loot and because I think the robots are funny. Even though I value those scavengers' lives more than the robot, and even though I would like to have kept them alive, I killed them only because they attacked me first. Now after the USS Constitution finds a new home atop the skyscraper, we can go back to Mandy's headquarters and she's still there. It was a bunch of other scavengers that attacked. Not Mandy, not Davies. They don't talk to us. They don't even acknowledge us but they're not hostile. And at this point, yes. even though we have sided with Ironsides, it would still be unethical to kill them. We would only kill them if they opened fire first. 
But that's just how I saw things in this quest, ladies and gentlemen. How did you see things? Where do you come down on the ethical or unethical line? But more importantly, did you have fun with this encounter? I sure did. This was one of my favorite quests in Fallout 4. I loved everything about it. I wish the player home had been a little bit more practical, but thankfully, with the use of console commands, we can make it so. Do you use the broadsider in your game in everyday combat? Is it a practical weapon for you? Bethesda had many more plans for this weapon. In the code, we find weapon mods and ammunition that didn't make their way into the game, that were designed for the broadsider, which is a bit of a shame. But even as it is, it's a fun weapon to use. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I've got a t-shirt shop, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to see the Oxhorn and Fallout themed shirts I've got for sale, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers can access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.